What's up guys? In this video, what I wanna do is cover one of the most common mistakes that I see students make when we're trying to subtract rational expressions. Now, most students get the idea of these denominators are not the same, so therefore the first thing we need to do is find the least common denominator. Now, that is one thing where students make a lot of mistakes um, in their own right, but that's not the most common mistake that I wanna to get to in this video. So to find the common denominator, a lot of times the quickest, fastest, easiest way is just to multiply the denominators. But before you do that, you always wanna make sure that you can factor them. And now with an x here, I can't simply factor anything, so I'm just gonna leave that as, as that. But over here, I have an x squared minus a 3x, and hopefully you recognize that they both share an x. Basically, I can factor out an x. Now, if you're not seeing this, let's just maybe rewrite the x squared as an x times x, so you can see that they have an x in common. Okay, so what I want you to see here is instead of writing x squared as like, you know, x squared, I'm writing it as an x times x. So now what I want you to see is they both have, both of these terms have an x in common. So I can factor that out, or another way with the operation we're basically doing is dividing that term out. So when I do that, what I'm gonna simply do is say, all right, I'm gonna put that x over here, and that's gonna leave me now with an x minus a three. And again, we can always go back and check our work when we are looking into, did we factor this correctly? That's always a great question to like ask yourself, like, did I do that correctly? And to do that, all you simply need to do is just multiply whatever term you factored out back through your parentheses, right? Via the distributor property. And you notice that x times x gives you back an x squared, right? Which is what, and x times negative three x gives you that negative three x. So we're good there. So a lot of times when I have this, what I like to do is just go ahead and rewrite it in the factor form just below it. Now, again, this is not the common mistake that we are looking for. We're still not there yet. But again, that is something really important for I want you to recognize here. So what we have here is on this side, we have an x times x minus three. And then over here, we just have the x. So if we want to get a common denominator, what you recognize here is, well, this already has the x and x minus three. This already has the x. What else do I need to obtain on this right-hand side of this fraction? So therefore, it's going to be the same denominator. And hopefully, you can just realize that, oh, well, if this has an x minus three, this doesn't. That means I need to multiply this by an x minus three. Now, just remember, whatever you do in the denominator, you also have to make sure you do in the numerator. That's what we're gonna be calling our equivalent fractions. So, now we're gonna get into the mistake. This is where students are gonna make the mistake. And where that mistake comes through is they just go ahead and apply their operation in the numerator. See, the cool thing over here is I didn't have to do anything, right? This is basically just preserved um, as a one over x times x minus three. But over here, I need to simplify this. And what I'm doing here is I'm typically gonna multiply the two times x, right? and then the two times negative three, following that distributive property. But the problem here is, this is actually going to be, what we're not gonna to wanna to do is multiply this by a positive two, we're actually gonna to wanna to multiply this by a negative two. So what I like to do is whenever I see subtraction, I don't want to do subtraction. I want to do addition. So what I'm gonna do though, to make sure I'm preserving the operation correctly, I'm gonna change the subtraction to an addition of a negative. So what that is doing, again, like, Adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting, right? If you think about it this way, if I had like five minus four is negative three. And the same thing, if I said a one, five minus four, did I say a five minus four? One minus four is a negative three. Same thing, if I said a one plus a negative four, that's also gonna equal to a negative three, right? So these are going to be those equivalent equations, okay? Or equivalent expressions to represent that. So I prefer to add a negative. So whenever I see subtraction, it might even be helpful just to go ahead and make that addition and then put the negative up top. Because I'm telling you, this is where students make their mistake. Especially if they're taking a test or they're taking a quiz and they're moving fastly and they kind of forget about things. They will forget to bring this negative. Now again, you don't have to do this, but if you've made this mistake before, you know exactly where you made it. You just weren't paying attention to the details. So now that I have this as a negative, I can now apply distributive property. And again, remember, I changed this to a positive, so it's gonna be plus, and now I have a negative two x plus a six. All right, so you're not gonna get the right answer if you don't do this correctly. And then again, that's gonna be all over our common denominator of x times an x minus a three. So now in this case, now we notice that our denominators are exactly the same. So now all we need to do is apply our operation to our numerator. And the only thing I can really combine here is the one and the six. So now it's gonna give me a final answer of negative two x plus six all over x times x minus three. And sorry, that's a one plus six is gonna be seven. And then also we wanna make sure we include our excluded values. Those are gonna be the values that are gonna make my denominator equal to zero. And you can see if I were to plug those numbers in for x in the denominator, they would make them zero. That's why they are excluded from the domain of this expression. Now, there's something that was really important that I mentioned in this video that I want you to always do first when combining rational expressions. If you're not sure you caught it, then go ahead and check out the next video where I will explain why we always want to do this first before we simplify rational expressions.